If you haven't been here before, welcome to my channel. If you have subscribed and viewed some of my content in the past, then welcome back. I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to fly some beautiful aircraft to some stunning parts of the planet, teach and mentor some great pilots in high performance aircraft, and help ferry and deliver aircraft on my own or with owners to their home airfields. In this video, I'm flying the amazing Cirrus SF-50 Vision Jets across the Atlantic from Cape Cod, Massachusetts to Oxford, England. Rather than another Atlantic crossing video, although you're watching some shots I took, while I was in the cruise on the penultimate leg between Reykjavik, Iceland and Wick, Scotland, I was keen to give you a little insight at the Garmin Perspective Touch Avionics. Hope you enjoy and gain some knowledge on the system in the process. Just going to have a little bit of a brief look at the SF50, the Vision Perspective Plus cockpit, and I just wanted to show you here that we've got uh, two main screens and three touch screens. So we have uh, PFD, MFD, three touch screens. So we've got GTC number one, GTC number two. GTC, it's a Garmin touchscreen. The PFD basically is showing us all our normal information, where we have all of the flight information on the aircraft, and it's all pretty self-explanatory. Trust information at the top, autopilot enunciator, communications, aircraft ID, indicated airspeed, our usual attitude indicator. And then we got here, our altitude or flight level, vertical speed, there we have our HSI set up in GPS, we've got our wind information, temperature, our current leg and time and then we've got a checklist on the right hand side. This is all basically controlled through GTC number one. The MFD is predominantly controlled by GTC number two. So up on the screen here on the PO, on the MFD, we've got all of our engine information and big moving map. And I have mine set up with this inset down the bottom with my flight plan progression and my vertical navigation profile when I need it. Quick look on here, engine thrust, all the engine information there, N1, N2, ITTs, oil temperature and pressure. Down here, fuel, gallons per hour, fuel remaining. Then battery and generators, landing gear position, trim position, flat position and pressurization and landing field elevation as well because all of that's automatic. This is basically all controlled through the MFD homepage. Over here we've got our NAVCOM homepage. We can see we've got our transponder ident, our transponder code. This is how we control the um, intercoms and the radios. So at the moment you can see here that I'm on COM number one because it's green. It's also saying Mike is not on number one. This one is blue, so that's the one that I could select and um, dial in a frequency into there if I wanted to. Mic one, I've got monitoring, so the headphones are monitoring COM1 and COM2, and the reason for that is because I've got the guard frequency 121.5 on COM2, and there's a standby. But anything that I type in here at the moment is going to go straight into standby COM number one. Each of these screens can be utilised for a different function, so for example GTC1 could be used as a NAVCOM as well. If this screen failed, the GTC number 3 screen, which is predominantly the NAVCOM screen, failed, then I could use the NAVCOM over here. I could also use the NAVCOM over here on GTC2 as well. This one, if this one failed, could also control the PFD as well. So each of these screens have different functions that they could utilize as well. Down here I have my autopilot and flight director selector, heading information, autopilot information and 
altitude, so lateral and vertical. And down on here, I've got my auto throttle and manual or FMS, so flight management system, which is pre-programmed speeds for my autopilot and auto thro throttle. And up here, I can see that my auto throttle is keeping me at a speed of Mach 5.525. Mach 5 would be very nice, but Mach 0.525. GPS, the aircraft is following my route at the moment towards between DevB and WIC. And I can see here that the autopilot is on, the yaw damper is on, the auto throttle is on. This I've got a little green arc here, which is just limiting the amount of bank that I have up here at the moment. Altitude or flight level, 310, because I've got a standard setting here. And there I've got my flight level 310. So predominantly, if I, mainly if I wanted to change things on the MFD screen, I would over here utilize my flight plan. So let's go into the flight plan page. And here I can see I've got my active flight plan. I can move this around just with my finger and scroll up and down if I wanted to. As I scroll up and down, you'll see over here that this will actually move as well and change positions. So if I move that um, down a little bit to things that have happened in the past, then you can see that. But if I move it up to WIC, then here I can see all of the information telling me my desired track, my distance to WIC, my fuel remaining, my cumulative time, and then my ETA there as well. And that's over the WIC NDB. At the moment I don't have any vertical navigation profiles selected in there at all. But let's say I did want to do something like that. Let's say I wanted to um, say, well, OK, I just want to be over the top of the Wick Airport at, um, let's say, 2,000 feet, just so that I got some sort of idea as to when I need to start descending. So really simply, these touchscreens work really, really nicely. So just next to the Wick one here, I'm just going to go where it says altitude and feet. I'm just going to tap into there. And let's say I wanted to be 2,000 feet over the top of the Wick beacon. There's mean sea level, I could change it to flight level, but there's mean sea level, and just go enter. And now I can see here that it says, OK, you're going to descend a long track offset. Well, I said I want to be at WIC, so that's at 2,000 feet, and then I can just go create. So there you go, so now this has gone here in blue. There's the little pencil mark to say that it was me that selected that in. Here's a 3.7 degree flight path angle. And basically now it's going to come over here and tell me that in 15 minutes time I'll need to start descending to be over the top of the WIC NDB at 2000 feet. Up on here I can also see my top of descent which is displayed on the path going between the aircraft and WIC. Now on here, this is where the perspective plus works really, really nicely. So on here I can just go into EGPC, lots of information about that one waypoint. Here, waypoint information. Tap on there, now I get all the information about WIC. So information about WIC. Here I've got all of the frequencies. And the nice thing here is that let's say I want to load up the frequency, and here at WIC you can see that the frequency actually is a VOR frequency. So if I tap on here, it will say, right, okay, where do you want to put that frequency? Do you want to put it in NAV1, active or standby? NAV2, active or standby? Well, let's just put it in NAV2, active. So if I go into NAV2, active, then it has sent it over to the NAV2, active. Now the thing is here, I can't actually see that on the screen because here I only have COM1 and COM2. But if I wanted to see the NAV, I can quite happily go down into where it says audio and radios. There's NAV2, there's 113.6, there's the WIC um, beacon being actually identified, and there is where I'd be able to listen to the, Morse, to the, um, uh, to the weather. Let's go back. So audio and radios is where I can see all of my nav, my comms, my music, my speaker, everything that's going on as far as that's concerned, telephone. i just go back on here now. So if I wanted to, for example, load up the um, 
wick tower frequency into com number two standby. What I need to do on here is tap on the frequency. It'll say, where do you want to put that frequency? I go standby com number two, and as I push that, you'll see that it will enter it into there. There you go. So nav two has now got the wick tower frequency in there. Other information on here as well is weather. So I downloaded some weather using Connect earlier on. And here I can now get my information as far as the weather is concerned at WIC. And here I can see 160 degrees at 14, meaning that I'm going to be using runway 13 on the way into WIC. Visibility, all the nines, few clouds at 3,000 feet, temperature 7, and altimeter 993. So what I'm going to do with that is up on here I've got my barometric uh, setting knob and I'm going to turn that now to 993 and you can see it just changing here. So that's now 993 and it goes into a pre-select so when I need to switch out of a flight level I can push this button and then it will switch to 993. So as soon as I get that sort of information out of the weather information I can load it in there and just keep myself uh, ahead of the game. So weather, got that weather information there, you've got METAR decoded and uh, TAFs at different airports. Airport directory, so got all the information about here with um, sort of uh, um, yeah, just all sorts of restrictions and stuff like that. Charts, this aircraft at the moment doesn't have the charts selected because I'm on the transatlantic database at the moment, but I've got the charts on my iPad. Tell me about the runways. So we know it's runway 13, 6,007 feet available. Any no TAMs from the charts? Well, I don't have the charts loaded at the moment. And then here's all the different procedures as well. So just by utilising the EGPC here, I can very easily go in and get all the information I need out of the aircraft uh, for WIC without having to look at my iPad to do that. But let's load up the approach, so really simple, procedure button, approach, here we've got EGPC, we've got the RNAV-13, if I've pushed on that anyway, give me the options for all the other different approaches. I know that Og Asu is the waypoint that I want to go to, the minutes I'm not too sure about, I'll set those in later on. SBAS, we don't have SBAS in the United Kingdom anymore. If I want to do, I can press preview. And as I go preview on here, it says, where do you want to preview and show it on the map? It would say show chart if I did have the charts loaded in the aircraft, but I don't on this one. So there you go, show on map. And there you go. So Wix down here. Orgasu is there. And there's my inbound course with each of the waypoints being displayed and the sequence being shown here as well. And if I'm happy with that, then I can just load that, and then that goes back to the map page, as I had before. So now what I have on my flight plan is I have an active flight plan going through all the way into the approach. Here's all the approach waypoints, initial approach fix, final approach fix, missed approach point, and then my flight plan is now as the en-route section and the approach section. At any time, if I wanted to delete any waypoints out of the uh, aircraft, I can quite easily do that uh, with just a couple of taps. So let's say I want to remove the airport Echo, Lima, Lima, out of Yaki. here. I could just tap on EGPC. It will say remove waypoint. I go, yes, please. So remove waypoint. Go, OK. And there you go. So the WIC airport has now gone. If I wanted to load any waypoint into the system, I can either go add on route waypoint or here I could tap on WIC, go insert after, and then here, let's say EGPC, let's say I wanted to put the airport back in there again, go enter, and it will now enter it back into the system again. So quite easily go and enter Stop waypoints and remove waypoints. Zero, five, zero, five, zero, so that's just a very, very quick overview of the Perspective Plus. So we've got the PFD, we've got the MFD, We've got the PFD Home, which basically is controlling everything up on the home page here. So on the PFD. 
then the active flight plan but here many many other selections of things that I can do I'll just take you through one more little thing I can halve and I can split the screen up on here so there I can split the screen and here with the panel I can switch this across and move the magenta sorry the cyan from this side over to this side and now anything I do on the MFD homepage is going to be selected through the right hand side of the screen so let's say I wanted to have a look at uh, how my pressurization system was going so down here I've got aircraft systems so I can tap on there and then here my environmental and pressurization system as soon as I select that up it's going to show on the side where the cyan was so here is all about my pressurization system if I wanted to have a look at my engine and fuel I can tap on there and then that will change over here to engine and fuel so wherever the cyan outline is and that's controlled by moving this knob here then I can display anything I like on each set of the pages so there that could come across to here and then if I wanted to go back to full screen again I've got the full screen button here and that will take me back to full screen so navcom on GTC number three MFD homepage with all the icons and different things I can utilize Air Canada, PFD home controlling the PFD. Germany, contact Shanwick 